Hey guys, Sam here from Honey Sauce. I had somebody post a question to me, and that was how do you go about picking your apiary sites? Um, when I'm looking at the apiary sites, we need to take into consideration the, the local climate. What I mean by that is if, uh, if, if we're going into summer, we need to anticipate what's the expected temperatures for that region. If you've got a place that's low to mid 20s majority of the time, or uh, comparatively to do you expect high 30s to mid 40s, even up towards uh, 50 degree days, you, you need to manage your hives accordingly. Um, a, a really big thing that I tell people is um, take be purposeful with your hives. Why do you do what you're doing with your hives? Um, so you need to take into consideration the climate. You need to take into consideration any possible rainfall. You know, you don't want to be sitting in low spots where there's going to be potential for flooding. Or it doesn't even have to be a low spot. It could be just a, um, a flat part or a low part in an open paddock. Um that's susceptible to a flooding. So you need to take good consideration into that. Um, right, so for us, for example, we know that during our summer, we get uh, a reasonable amount of temperatures, which is high 30s, low 40s. So going into summer, we will take into consideration having part shade in the afternoon. If you're in a windy area, you're going to want to see where your predominant winds are coming from in that area. If you've got a tree line, you want to consider having the bees on the other side of that tree line just to make sure that you've got a, a buffer for, for the bees so that they're not copying the brute force, the brunt of the wind. Um, you know, when, when we keep bees... One of the uh, when we're coaching people about keeping bees, you know, one of the core principles that I want to instill into people is, um, you know, be purposeful. Have a reason for doing what you're doing. Don't just play with the bees because you want to play with the bees. Don't just set the bees down into an open paddock because it's the easiest place that you can put them. You want to consider access. You want to consider their needs first. All right. If you've got a tree line that you can place the bees. If you've got a, a high ridge that you can place the bees, if you've got um, a stream that's near the bees, you need to take all these sorts of things into consideration. It's not just flowers, right? That does play a big part. You need to ensure that you've got nectar, that you've got pollen, but you also need to consider shelter. Do they have shelter from the rain? Do they have shelter from the wind? Do they have shelter from the sun? Um... You know, overexposure to anything can be potentially lethal to bees. Overexposure to cold, overexposure to water, you know, wet bees don't live. The bees don't like being wet. They need good ventilation. They need a, a water flow. They need a pollen source. Whether that's supplemental pollen, it doesn't matter. Um, they need a nectar flow. Now, different types, times of the year, you may have pollen dearths, you may have nectar dearths. Um, these do need to be considered. But uh, specifically talking about an ap apiary, you want to know that where you are is beneficial for the bees. Full stop. This also comes into play when you're considering where you're leaving the bees for winter. I mean, you need to know that if you get a heavy rain, that you can get into your bees. It's no good having bees in a location that should it start to flood and the farmer or the property owner calls you and says, hey, your hives are going to be underwater very shortly. You need to be able to get in. You need good access and egress into your site. This needs to be considered. There are so many beekeepers that I know right, that have gone into winter and their site has gone has begun to flood. So they've gone into panic mode and tried to get their stuff out. Now they've gone in with big heavy trucks and equipment and they've gotten bogged. They've gotten stuck themselves. <coughs> 
and they were not able to get their hives out. They drowned. Right? They killed their bees due to lack of planning. I want everyone to think before they act as far as bees are considered. I can't stress this enough. Right? There's loads of new beekeepers who like to open their hives weekly. And they do. And that's fine. It's part of the excitement. It's part of getting to know your bees. But when you can actually get through to yourself that the more you play with them, the harder time they'll have to actually get about and do their work, the less productive they are, right? You know, it, it, it's, it's all part and parcel. Whenever you go into a hive, you need to have a reason. Whenever you move a hive, you need to have a reason. When you pick a site location, you need to have a reason. People need to think about what it is they're trying to achieve and the best way that they can achieve it. If you do want to, if you've got potential sites that you want to talk about, if you've got locations that you need advice about, please reach out to us. We're here to help. I did not have this help available to me when I very first started out. I didn't have advice. I really nearly failed so many times with keeping bees because I didn't have a wealth of knowledge to lean back on. I was doing it myself. We're here to help. We want to help. If you want to book in for a mentoring session, whether that be over the phone, booking in for a one-on-one, -on -one, um, whatever it is, honestly, whatever it is, please get in touch. I hope this was helpful. Thanks. Stay tuned for the next one. Sam.